Hey everyone, this is Lauren from Wildflowers and I'm here with my daughter Israel and our dog Bebe. And we're getting ready to make a video of a set of nails that best describes me as a person and a nail artist. The nails that Israel has on are four weeks old, so the first thing I have to do is start by removing the Swarovski crystals. I have a special pair of nippers that I designate just for this job. Now I'm using my electric file to remove her old acrylic. The pinkies were made of solid acrylic, but I did lay a clear underneath so that I can shave down to the clear. I'm mostly removing gel polish and lifted areas. This is what the nails look like when the preparation is complete. Now I'm ready to fill them. The nails are primed and ready to go, so I'm just going to pick up a bead of pink acrylic and fill in the back areas. This process is repeated on all 10 nails. Now on this next finger there was a little crack on the side, so I have to add a little extra bit. Now I'm using an arbor band to smooth and rough up the nails all at the same time. I'm going to be using gel polish for my background colors and gel definitely likes a rough surface. I shape and smooth the free edges of the nail. Repeat this on all 10 and I'm ready to go. Sometimes if I can't find a color that I like, I just make my own. I'm using three colors for base colors. I'm starting with the green, and then I'm going to move on to a nice, beautiful yellow color, and then finally to a pink. I'm now getting started on my owl design. I'm gonna take a champagne color and just color the middle. Then I'm going to take little fish scales and gently place them on the nail where the gel polish was, and then I'm going to cure it. Next, I'm going to top coat this to protect it, and then I'm going to buff it to get it nice and smooth. Now I'm painting the wings of the owl on. I'm going to do a few coats, and then I'm going to buff it to prepare it for nail art. Here I'm starting on my piano nail. I've played piano since I was married, so that's been about seven years. I finish the same way by wiping it and buffing it. Now I'm beginning to work on my herringbone nail. I chose this pattern because I'm also a hairstylist and I love to braid, especially French braids, and every time I do this design it makes me think of braiding hair. I'm using several different colors of gel polishes and then just cleaning up with a cleanup brush. I'm going to buff this one to get it nice and smooth and prepare it for nail art as well. Now I'm going to adhere some empowered nail art fabric to my herringbone design to make it pop. This is something that I do to set my herringbone patterns apart from everyone else's. And while I have the fabric out, I'm going to make my cross nail. All you do is cut it, pull off the back, and press it down onto the nail. The cross represents, of course, my faith and my Nazarite DNA. Here I'm cutting off the excess with an X-Acto knife. Yes, I like to live dangerously, and this is my daughter. Back to the owl. Now what I'm doing here is I use a calligraphy pen, and I dip it in black airbrush paint, which is acrylic paint, and I'm using it to make wings on the owl. Now I'm taking cotton dipped in alcohol and I'm just blotting it to make it look soft and feathery. Now comes the real fun with a calligraphy pen. I don't know where I picked up this skill. I guess I was just born with it. But sometime in high school, henna became very popular. And I would be bored in choir. So I would sit there and use pens to draw on my hands. A lot of my friends started noticing, and soon people were lining up to have me draw things like this on their hands. I don't know what it is, I just keep on going until it looks balanced. 
And I just love the art that goes into drawing things like this and how intricate it is. And now here on the herringbone pattern, I'm going to add a little bit more embellishment with my calligraphy pen. I'm satisfied with these four nails, so now I'm going to top coat. Now for the owl's head, which I'm going to do 3D, I'm just using a large bead of white acrylic. I chose to do an owl because I love that it represents wisdom and I love to learn from other people's mistakes. Here what I'm doing is using a gray gel polish to make the outline of the eyes. I'm then going to cure it and wipe it off. Now I'm using yellow acrylic, placing a bead down, and then picking up a black Swarovski, placing it in, and then slicing it off at the top corner. And here I'm just making sure everything's perfect. Now I'm using another bead of white acrylic to make the forehead part of the owl. I'm just going to bring this down, I'm going to let it set up, and then I'm going to use a dotting tool to give it some texture. And don't forget the cute little beak. Aww. This is my Amor nail. I made this nail special for my new daughter Israel. We just adopted her and she's originally from Mexico. Amor means love in Spanish. I'm just adhering all kinds of Swarovski crystals and caviar to the top. And now I'm going to add some cute little wildflowers to my Mendy nail. Wildflowers for me represent not worrying. There's a great scripture in the Bible in Luke chapter 12 verse 27 that talks about the wildflowers. And that's also the name of my nail and hair studio, Wildflowers. So to make these petals, I'm just using white acrylic. You have to wait for it to get to the perfect consistency before you push it around and shape it into a petal. Making flowers takes lots and lots and lots of practice. I practice on Sunday afternoons for a long time before I got the hang of it. Lastly, I'm adding Swarovski crystals and caviar beads to finish it off and give it a very polished look. Now, back to my piano nail. I start by using my calligraphy pen to separate the keys on the piano. And then I color in the black keys. I don't normally do a lot of piano or music nail art because unless you have a really thin tool to make lines, it tends to look a little sloppy. But using this calligraphy pen makes it work perfectly. When I'm happy with my design, I top coat, and then, of course, I bedazzle it with Swarovski crystals and caviar. And now on to my birdcage nail. For me, the birdcage represents my addiction when I struggled with drugs earlier in my life. This nail goes hand in hand with the nail next to it, working like a mural. It's a bird flying out of a bird cage, representing freedom. And I'm just using my calligraphy pen again to make very thin lines for the cage. Now I'm gel top coating and then adding little beads to dazzle up the chain that the bird cage is hanging on. On this nail that's right next to the bird cage, I am creating the bird that's flying free. Birds represent a lot of things to people. For me, it goes with the caged bird becoming free, but also I sing, and so some people like to call me a songbird. I'm making little clouds and embellishing them with Swarovski crystals to add a little element of glamour. So this one's kind of funny. Every time I do a chevron nail, it reminds me of an unmentionable event that happened in high school involving my parents' vehicle and a chevron sign. It just reminds me of all the silly things you do when you're young and then you try to hide it from your parents. So to make this chevron, I'm just using a striper brush with black and white acrylic paint. 
It's very masculine looking and doesn't really go with the rest of my design, so I'm going to soften it up by making a circular line. And of course, I'm going to top it off by bedazzling it with some Swarovski crystals and caviar beads. I like the Mendy nail so much that I decided to repeat it again on the thumbnail. While you're watching this, I'll talk for a second about my design. The first thing I did was pick out a color palette. I'm really into sophisticated color palettes because I just get really tired of things like pink and black or the primary colors, and I always try to go for something a little more sophisticated and different. So I picked out a color palette. Um, I had a soft sage green, a nice soft yellow, a pink, and a gray, and of course black and white. I feel like picking out a good color palette will really make or break a design. Next I chose the elements that I wanted to involve in the nails and how I could use those and make them sophisticated, like the owl for example. Um, I looked at a lot of different pictures of owls and then decided on the best way to make it fit into my design with the same color palette and whimsical feel. Oopsies. My preferred shape and length of nail is the almond shape, just like they are in this set of nails. They're my absolute favorite. They have been for probably the past four years, even before they were cool. I kind of got mad when they became in style. I was like, no, because I liked being different. But I like it because it's very retro and it's very pinup girlish, and I think that kind of stuff is really neat. And it reminds me of my grandma. I secure the Swarovski crystals and caviar beads using a little bit of gel top coat. So here's the finished look of the thumbnail, and here are the other four fingers, the piano, the bird cage with the bird, and the cross. And here's the other hand, the Amour, the herringbone pattern, the owl, and the Mendy nail, and of course the chevron. I hope you learned something today. Thank you so much for watching, and please vote for me to become Nails Magazine's next top nail artist. The link is below.